Part two of the BLAST lab is going to be sort of a designing and conducting your own investigation. Um, it's not 100% free reign because there is a sort of procedure that you have to follow, but you have a choice of what you're going to be looking after. It kind of is reminiscent of the cancer project where you got to pick a cancer. Here, you're going to get to pick a gene that you're interested in looking at. Um, and I'll show you the options for the choices you have at the end. And you can also look up any other one that you're interested in as long as it has, you know, viable scientific reason for you to look at. Um, so the instructions say, now that you've completed this investigation, you should feel more comfortable using BLAST. The next step is to learn how to find and BLAST your own genes of interest. To locate a gene, you will go to the Entree Gene website, which is linked in the PDF. Once you have found the gene on the website, you can copy and paste the gene sequence and input it into the BLAST query like you did with the downloaded files from, fossil, from the fossil that we um, identified. So an example here of a procedure that you would follow, you don't have to do this gene. You also don't have to follow um, the specific names of what we're going to be referencing, but you are going to be following the general steps and explanation with the gene that you looked up or that you're interested in looking about. So, for example, one student's starting question is, what is the function of actin in humans? Um, do other organisms have actin? And if so, which ones? And so that's a very good question that we can target with BLAST to answer. And so the first thing that this student would do is to go to the Entrez gene website and search for human actin. And the reason why you have to search for human is because um, the first question they asked is, what is the function in humans? And then second of all, they're going to be comparing it with other species. So you have to be specific with the species that you're looking for in, and then you have to be specific about the protein name or the gene name. So you're going to click on the first link that appears and scroll down to the section NCBI reference sequences. And then under mRNA and proteins, you're going to click on the first file name. It's going to be named um, something along the lines of NM with a serial number. These standardized numbers make cataloging sequence files easier, so don't worry about the file number. Just below the gene title, click on FASTA. This is the name for a particular format for displaying the gene sequence that the, we'll be using in BLAST. So the nucleotide sequence displayed is now going to be that of the actin gene in humans for this student. Um, the student would copy the entire gene sequence and then go to the BLAST homepage, which is the one we've been using for the part one, and now we're going to use it again in part two. It's linked again for you. And you're going to click on nucleotide blast sequence to compare it to the gene sequence of all the other animals possible that are in the database. And the student's going to paste it into the enter query sequence and then give the query a title in the box provided if you plan on saving it. So if you want to save the file so that you can reference it back and forth and back and forth, this is a super useful way so that you don't have to keep entering it and finding it again every single time. So under search set, you, um, the student would select whether they want to search the human genome only, or they can search mass genome only, or all genomes of all animals, which is probably the more interesting way to do for the last one. So under program selection, they would choose whether or not they want highly similar sequences or somewhat similar sequences, and choosing somewhat, sequences, somewhat similar sequences will provide you with more results because it shows you um, the, all the sequences that have very slight differences. Um, and then lastly, you would click BLAST to do the actual run through of the database to pull up all the results of the gene sequences of anything that's similar to actin or basically is actin in other animals. So below is a list of some gene suggestions you could investigate using BLAST. As you look at a particular gene, try to answer the following questions. So here are some genes already that are very interesting that, to look at. Um, we talked about JPDH earlier as an example. Um, between humans and mice and fruit flies. Um, I don't know if it was mice, maybe it was chimps. But there's other things like ATP synthase, which is in charge of making your ATP during cellular respiration and um, some also in photosynthesis. There's catalase, which is a very important enzyme for breaking down things. There's keratin, which is in your hair and your nails as a structural um, protein when it's produced. There's myosin, which is in your muscles, which helps with movement. PAX1 is related to eyeball um, uh, formation. So there's a lot of interesting enzymes um, that you can look enzymes. Well, I say enzymes because a lot of these are enzymes that um, are super important for metabolic functions in survival. But there's also other proteins that have genes that are also essential for survival that aren't necessarily enzymes, for example, like myosin. 
um, actin is usually paired with myosin. So if that gives you a hint whether or not it's related to what I said earlier about myosin, it is. So whatever gene you pick, you can pick ones from here. You can look up important genes and proteins and their functions to kind of see what you're interested in looking at. And you can pick the name of whatever gene you want to that's related to a protein that we can also kind of know the function of. Um, it would be good if you wrote in your initial questions, which is your starting question is about what the function is of the protein and then if other organisms have it or not. Um, and I keep saying protein because when you, proteins are the physical product that do a function in your body. And all proteins have genes because they come originally coded from your DNA. So if you find a protein, you can always look up the protein and then the um, website with, Entree will be able to find the gene for you based on the protein name. So whenever you pick the one that you want to and you follow through all these steps and you finish your blast, you're going to be answering the questions um, below and you'll turn these in as your final thing. Um, a screenshot of your blast would also be super, super nice to look at and um, if you have any other interesting results. So the first question would be, what is the function in humans of the protein produced from that gene? Would you expect to find the same protein in other organisms? If so, which ones? You can think about how closely related these organisms might be to us based on common ancestry. You might also base it on the daily life functions that these organisms have to do compared to our daily life functions, whether or not they would have this protein. Um, those are some interesting ways to think about it. Um, is it possible to find the same gene in two different organisms, two different kinds of organisms, but not find the protein that is produced from that gene? So is it possible that Different organisms have this gene, but not all organisms produce the protein product of this gene. Maybe why or why not? Think about introns and exons. If you found the same gene in all organisms you test, what does this suggest about the evolution of this gene in the history of life on Earth? How important is it for survival, basically? Right? If the first thing on Earth that was alive had this gene, it might be kind of important. Um, does the use of DNA sequences in the study of evolutionary relationships mean that other characteristics are unimportant in such studies? Explain your answer. So is it, this question is basically asking you, if we just use genetics to find out how closely things are related, is that going to make homologous structures, analogous structures? Is it going to make fossil evidence? All of those things, is it going to make them useless? Or are they still important to also consider when you are looking at um, evolutionary relationships throughout history. So these are the questions you're going to answer after you pick your gene and do a blast for it. And you will submit your um, answers to your questions and also hopefully a screenshot of the blast results that you got um, as part two of the blast lab.